I'm Shay Russell from mining.com.au and joining me today is Glenn Grayson, the Managing Director for Aruma Resources. Glenn, it's good to see you again. How are you? I'm going well, Shay. Thank you very much. Uh, now, I always love it when I've got a copper explorer in, sitting in front of me today. Uh, we have some stunning historical copper results happening out in your Fiery Creek project located in Queensland. Uh, I believe it's not too long until there's boots on the ground and you get to start uh, checking out these rock chip samples in person. That's right. That's right. We've got the uh, shareholder approval meeting on this Thursday. Um, hopefully they like the projects and they approve the acquisition and then we'll be hitting the ground pretty soon after that. Uh, okay, Glenn, what part of Fiery Creek are you particularly interested in? Is there any other sort of high grade areas you're likely to prioritise over others? Well, I guess the, I'm starting to think of Fiery Creek as a, a north and south. So in the south, there's a lot more outcrop. That's where the, the majors focused on and, and and mainly held the ground. So the Fiery Creek project itself, which is uh, Sumitomo did some sampling there and some drilling. That's the, the four metres of 1.4% copper uh, in the drill hole there. Um, so they, they collected surface samples that were up to 36% copper. Um, but in the northern half of the project, uh, there's a lot more shallow cover, so a lot less outcrop. So that's where I'll focus on some geophysics uh, to look for some of these sulphide or denser ore bodies. Um, but I really like the, the Piper project. So that was sampled by MIM in the 90s. They did a little bit of drilling, but it, it hasn't been touched since then. So it's pretty exciting up there. Uh, all right, so let's go through the sort of numbers that we're actually looking at in today's announcement. Now, my understanding is some of these results date back to the 1990s and this ground was pegged out by a major miner, but then never followed up. So what makes you interested in this region? I guess the majors have held it a lot. Uh, so as you said, in the 90s, MIM had it. So that's now uh, Glencore. Uh, soon after that, BHP held the ground. Sumitomo have held it. Rio most recently um, held the ground without doing any work on the, um, getting out there and looking at the rocks themselves. So it ticks the boxes for the area selection. The geology is the right geology for a, an ISA style uh, sedimentary deposit, so be that copper or lead and zinc. But we're not looking for the 50 million tonne sized ore body that, that those guys are looking for. So we're with the way Mount Isa is heading at the moment, uh, there's plenty of infrastructure in place, plenty of capacity. And so we're looking for a smaller ore body, um, healthy grade and uh, dig it up in toll treat or treat through one of the, the existing plants. So we think that's a pretty healthy model going forward. Uh, it certainly is because it significantly reduces uh, capital expenditure for shareholders down the line. Uh, but I guess one pe thing people forget about is the healthy workforce that exists out in Mount Isa. Now, this has been a major mining hub in Queensland for over 100 years. And you being able to explore for the Fiery Creek project obviously reduces your reliance on a FIFO workforce, doesn't it? It, it does. I guess Fiery Creek is about 200 kilometres north of Mount Isa. Um, but there's plenty of infrastructure in place there to, to look after people. It's not actually that far from Century. Um, uh, Capricorn Copper Mine there is for 29 metals. So there's, there's, there's certainly infrastructure nearby. And just for all the geology nerds listening out for this region, tell me, is, Ma uh, is this Fiery Creek uh, project, is it a potential for an IOCG style of mineralization? It is. So I'm, I'm going in with the, the theory that IOCGs are less determinant on rock type. So uh, the eyes of belts always the, the western side is the said hosted copper deposits and the Concari side is the, the ICG um, and, and you didn't find either next door. Um, but there's no reason why you can't find ICG in the in the eyes of belt. So. And hopefully it's just a couple more weeks until you get out there and you can start looking at it. That's right. So we'll get there. We'll um, hopefully find some more nice rock chips of our own to um, to release and um, find some drill targets. Glenn, investors can be an impatient bunch. Tell me, when will we start to get a look at what you're seeing on the ground? Uh, so I'll get out there and, and do some field work. Um, and uh, three to four weeks after that, we'll, we'll have some assay results, hopefully, of um, some follow-up assays of, of these ones that we've put out today. Okay, so that's about September we can look to see results. So that tells me that you don't feel like doing field work in the Mount Isa heat in November or December. No, that's right. It's um, <laughs> it's pretty tough going out there. It's very rugged terrain, Mount Isa. 
It is. It certainly is. Uh, listen, Glenn, thank you so much for being on here today. I have to say the happy rock nerd inside of me is very excited to see these results. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing if there is an IOCG out there. Thank you for being here today. No worries. Thank you, Shay.